You know, like I don't know what it would be like to try to take over New York with an alien army. Wow, time slipping. Wait, time, you know that? Yeah. You've seen that? Yeah. Can you fix that? No. Uh, the season one finale was quite intense. Uh, Loki has a big job ahead of him. Uh, what was it like to dig deeper into the multiverse and all these different timelines here in season two? Well, it's interesting. It's it's very much, you know, in the comics, you know, a lot of the, the, the issues were, you know, and what you see in, you know, in um, No Way Home is, you know, you're seeing the different the different characters, you know, from different universes. And, and it's interesting with the TVA, you know, by its very nature, it's kind of the, the underpinnings of, you know, the, the sacred timeline and, and the multiverse. So you're, you know, it's, it's less this season about seeing different variants of Loki, but more about the, the operations and how the TVA has been working and how it's ultimately now starting to fail uh, and with what happened at the end of season one. You've worked on several Marvel films before. Uh, what makes the Marvel Cinematic Universe special in your eyes? I think the things that we do best um, and the things that we've really tried to lean into here on Loki, but certainly uh, on other projects that I've worked on, making character-driven stories uh, that, that audiences can really respond to and understand and empathize with and see themselves in um, in fantastical worlds. Like you want to be able to go into these things to find a world, to see something that's maybe slightly unlike your world or more fantastical than it. Uh, but then these characters are still going through some version of the same emotions that we go through. You know, like I don't know what it would be like to try to take over New York with an alien army. Uh, but I do, I can understand Loki's uh, anger and feeling like resentment at not being seen. And I think that, that so much of these stories are about identity and characters trying to understand their place in the world. And I think that's something that's universal. Well, yeah, I grew up, you know, liking comics, loving comics. And it's, you know, you know, it is a, you know, the MCU is a universe of heroes. And I think that's, you know, you, you what the draw is, you know, you, you're, you're drawn to the charisma of the heroes, you know, Tony Stark and you know, Captain America and, you know, Thor. It's just, you know, there's, there, you know, there, there's kind of a, you know, let's say a bond, let's say, but, you know, there's definitely, you know, the the fans and myself included are, you know, are attracted to those characters and want to see their adventures. And I think that, you know, that's just mentioning the heroes, but then kind of, again, going back to Loki, you know, the same thing, it's the same thing where you're, you know, you know, you're responding to his, you know, the charisma, you know, and you want to continue to watch that. A little good old-fashioned leg work. Listen, we have different styles. You're a man of action, which is fine. I take a more slow, deliberate, cerebral approach. There's a future Marvel movie called uh, Avengers The Kang Dynasty. Uh, and with Kang being in this season of Loki, how important are the serious events uh, to the future of the MCU? I mean, we've said the, the multiverse saga started with Loki, and we really feel like this is our our story to to lay the groundwork for and to tell. I think season one obviously had huge ramifications, and naturally, us going into our season two felt felt the need to continue telling our story. Uh, because that does originate with us and our characters. And so we just wanted to see that through. So I think it has big ramifications and we're excited to further that world and story so that other filmmakers uh, hopefully are inspired to pick it up and, and continue telling it. How do you choose who lives and who dies? Make the hard choice. Yeah, and can you tell us anything about the future for Loki? Well, I, I can't without spoiling what we do this season. But what, what I would say is this, it really is, and I, I mentioned this earlier, but I think it's important. We want to see what is the best version of Loki? Have we ever even seen the best version of him yet? Um, what can he become? And this season truly is about him achieving his full potential. 
Uh, you know, he's an amazing character. You know, I hope that we see more of him. Time will tell. We'll see what happens in the overall MCU. There's, you know, it feels like there's, you know, the, the secret room in Marvel that has all the answers. <laughs> and, you know, every once in a while it opens up and a little bit of information comes out. A little over the top, don't you think? I thought it was spot on.